Welcome back to the 6th Gear Garage. Today I'm going to install this mini notch kit onto this 1980 Toyota pickup long bed frame. This kit is meant to be bolted on, but instead I'm going to be welding it on using my new MiG 200 from Art Captain. Last week I installed these 3 inch drop leaves. And normally you don't need a mini notch with just a 3 inch drop. But the thing about lowering a truck is you always want to go lower later on. So now is the ideal time to install the mini notch kit since I may end up adding some lowering blocks later on to drop it a couple more inches. Now right now there is no weight on this frame so it's actually sitting a little bit higher than factory. The first thing I need to do is figure out the point of contact where the axle would hit the frame when the suspension is fully compressed. So I used some ratchet straps to compress the suspension to get a better idea of where the axle would actually end up coming in contact with the frame. Now with the suspension compressed, I can use a plumb bob to find the exact center point of the axle. So there's my center line, but one more thing to consider is if I'm adding blocks later on, which is gonna reduce my clearance, look at the angle of the leaf. Now, imagine blocks on that leaf, which is already at a downward angle to the right. That's gonna move the axle straight up but actually angle it up and to the right a little bit, which would end up putting me right where the stock bump stop is. And that's gonna put my mini notch right about there. It's always good to double check because every suspension setup is different. Next, I needed a cardboard template. I made a new reference mark in the center of the bump stop and made a mark in the center of the template to make sure the cutout was perfectly centered. Next, I removed the wheel and supported the frame on both sides of the leaf spring. And got the factory bump stop out of the way. The inside edge of the frame is thinner than the outside on these old Toyotas, so it cut pretty quickly with the cutoff wheel. I considered cutting the mini notch to clear this extra bracing on the frame. But I didn't like the idea of removing all of that material from the mini notch. So I decided that I would trim just a little bit off the front of the mini notch. Now I needed to finish the cutout to test fit the notch. I decided to use the sawzall to do the two straight cuts across the underside of the frame. And oops. I didn't realize I was coming up so far on the inside of the frame. Well, the Sawzall definitely saved some time, but you did see me screw up on camera there. I uh, was just not paying attention to where the other side of the blade was. I thought I was in this groove the whole time, and it turns out I was cutting a new one. Then I used the two lines on the bottom of the frame as a guide to line up the notch on the outside of the frame. I was more careful with the Sawzall this time but I got to an area of the frame that seemed a lot thicker and was not cutting easily. So I went back to the cutoff wheel. And for the horizontal cut across the top of the notch, the cutoff wheel was my only choice because I couldn't get it started with a sawzall blade. No wonder it took so long to cut through the outside of the frame. Look. It's twice as thick because of this extra bracing in here where the bump stop attached to. So now let's do a quick test fit just to make sure I'm in the ballpark here. Not too bad. I'm a little bit large on the back side here, a little bit tight up front. I can take a little bit off of this inside edge to allow this to move back a little bit. But right now my main concern is that the inside edge is not flush because of this factory bracing here. So I have two options. I've made this template here to go around this factory bracing and I can either cut this piece out to fit flush around this or what I think I'm gonna do because that's gonna be a difficult curve to cut is draw a line straight down the edge so that it's flush with this piece and make a cut down and then I'll have to grind down these wells and actually take this piece off and that will allow the edge of the mini notch to sit flush against the frame.
Once I had most of the weld cut, I was able to break the rest with a hammer and chisel. This way, I didn't have to worry about cutting too deep and end up going into the frame. Then I ground down what was left of the welds to get the surface smooth and cleaned up the rest of the surface rust as well. After a test fit, I found that I needed to remove a little bit of material from the edge of the mini notch. I also put a bevel on the edge to allow for better penetration when welding two thick pieces of metal. So let's see how it fits now. We're pretty much flush. Here's how the other side looks. I will have to fill a little bit on this back side here. And on the inside here, I ground the edge of the mini notch as well as this extra bracing plate into a V-shape and that'll help get better penetration on thick metal as well as help me weld to the frame piece behind these two. Next, I cleaned up the areas of the frame that I'll be welding to and removed the paint from all the edges of the mini notch to expose clean metal where I'll be welding. I highly recommend using a 220 volt welder on thick metal like a frame, especially where good penetration is important for structural integrity. I repaired the frame of my 85 in a previous video using a smaller 110 volt welder and the viewers let me know it was a little underpowered for the job. After using this MiG 200 by Art Captain, I can honestly say you guys were 100% correct. It's twice as powerful as my 110 volt Lincoln Electric, and it made this job so much easier, welding this thick metal effortlessly. I'll keep my Lincoln around for welding sheet metal when there's no 220 outlet available, but I'm loving this MiG 200, and it was actually less expensive than the 110 volt Lincoln. I'll put a link in the description if you're looking for an affordable MiG welder that can do it all. Once I welded on the area that I was using the clamp on, I had no other surface to grip with the edge of the clamp. So I've got this magnet here and I can just grab onto that. And that way I still have good ground. Now some of the paint on this bracket is peeling off as you can see, just from the heat when I was welding it. So I'm gonna go over this with the grinder really quick and then a wire wheel to remove any loose paint as well as any of the original rust from the frame. And then I'm gonna get it ready for paint. I used a smaller drill attachment to reach the tighter areas that I couldn't get into with the big wire wheel. Now it's time to clean and prime and paint the bare metal to protect it from rust. I'm using Duplicolor Prep Spray to remove any grease or oil from the bare metal and I'm wiping this down with a terry cloth, not a paper towel because a paper towel will leave little fuzzies on all my welds. And there's what it helped remove. Next, I'm gonna apply some Duplicolor self-etching primer, and that's perfect for bare metal. Then I'm gonna apply the VHT roll bar and chassis, and even though it says it is self-priming paint, I'm a little skeptical, so I think it's always better to use a self-etching primer first over bare metal when you can. Links to these paints are in the description. I've given this 15 minutes to dry, and now it's time for the roll bar and chassis. This stuff covers really well. I've waited about 15 minutes for the first coat to dry. You can see it turned into this uh, satin black here to match the cap. And now I'm gonna apply the second coat. And the mini C-notch is done. 
Thanks for watching.